Section 31 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 14 of Pickling To Pickle Walnuts Green Take the largest and clearest you can get, pare them as thin as you can, have a tub of spring water stand by you, and throw them in as you do them. Put into the water a pound of bay salt, let them lie in the water twenty-four hours, take them out. Then put them into a stone jar, and between every layer of walnuts lay a layer of vine leaves at the bottom and top, and fill it up with cold vinegar. Let them stand all night, then pour that vinegar from them into a copper with a pound of bay salt. Set it on the fire, let it boil, then pour it hot on your nuts, tie them over with a woollen cloth, and let them stand a week. Then pour that pickle away, rub your nuts clean with a piece of flannel. Then put them again in your jar, with vine leaves as above, and boil fresh vinegar. Put into your pot to every gallon of vinegar a nutmeg sliced. Cut four large races of ginger, a quarter of an ounce of mace, the same of cloves, a quarter of an ounce of whole black pepper, the like of ordingle pepper. Then pour your vinegar boiling hot on your walnuts, and cover them with a woollen cloth. Let it stand three or four days. So do two or three times. When cold, put in half a pint of mustard seed, a large stick of horseradish sliced, tie them down close with a bladder, and then with a leather. They will be fit to eat in a fortnight. Take a large onion, stick the cloves in, and lay in the middle of the pot. If you do them for keeping, do not boil your vinegar, but then they will not be fit to eat under six months, and the next year you may boil the pickle this way. They will keep two or three years good and firm. To Pickle Walnuts White Take the largest nuts you can get, just before the shell begins to turn. Pare them very thin till the white appears, and throw them into spring water with a handful of salt as you do them. Let them stand in that water six hours. Lay on them a thin board to keep them under the water. Then set a stew pan on a charcoal fire with clean spring water. Take your nuts out of the other water and put them into the stew pan. Let them simmer four or five minutes, but do not boil. Then have ready by you a pan of spring water with a handful of white salt in it. Stir it with your hand till the salt is melted. Then take your nuts out of the stew pan with a wooden ladle and put them into the cold water and salt. Let them stand a quarter of an hour. Lay the board on them as before. If they are not kept under the liquor, they will turn black. Then lay them on a cloth and cover them with another to dry. Then carefully wipe them with a soft cloth. Put them into your jar or glass with some blades of mace and nutmeg sliced thin. Mix your spice between your nuts and pour distilled vinegar over them. First, let your glass be full of nuts. Pour mutton fat over them and tie a bladder and then a leather. To pickle walnuts black. You must take large full-grown nuts at their full growth before they are hard. Lay them in salt and water. Let them lie two days, then shift them into fresh water. Let them lie two days longer, then shift them again, and let them lie three days. Then take them out of the water and put them into your pickling jar. When the jar is half full, put in a large onion stuck with cloves. To a hundred of walnuts, put in half a pint of mustard seed, a quarter of an ounce of mace, half an ounce of black pepper, half an ounce of allspice, six bay leaves, and a stick of horseradish. Then fill your jar and pour boiling vinegar over them. Cover them with a plate, and when they are cold, tie them down with a bladder and leather, and they will be fit to eat in two or three months. 
the next year if any remains boil up your vinegar again and skim it when cold pour it over your walnuts this is by much the best pickle for use therefore you may add more vinegar to it what quantity you please if you pickle a great many walnuts and eat them fast make your pickle for a hundred or two the rest keep in a strong brine of salt and water boiled till it will bear an egg and as your pot empties fill them up with those in the salt and water take care they are covered with pickle in the same manner you may do a smaller quantity but if you can get rape vinegar use that instead of salt and water do them thus put your nuts into the jar you intend to pickle them in throw in a good handful of salt and fill the pot with rape vinegar cover it close and let them stand a fortnight then pour them out of the pot wipe it clean and just rub the nuts with a coarse cloth and then put them in the jar with the pickle as above if you have the best sugar vinegar of your own making you need not boil it in the first year but pour it on cold and the next year if any remains boil it up again skim it put fresh spice to it and it will do again to pickle gherkins take five hundred gherkins and have ready a large earthen pan of spring water and salt to every gallon of water two pounds of salt mix it well together and throw in your gherkins wash them out in two hours and put them to drain let them be drained very dry and put them in a jar in the meantime get a bell metal pot with a gallon of the best white wine vinegar half an ounce of cloves and mace one ounce of allspice one ounce of mustard seed a stick of horseradish cut in slices six bay leaves a little dill two or three races of ginger cut in pieces a nutmeg cut in pieces and a handful of salt boil it up in the pot altogether and put it over the gherkins cover them close down and let them stand twenty-four hours then put them in your pot and simmer them over the stove till they are green be careful not to let them boil if you do you will spoil them then put them in your jar and cover them close down till cold then tie them over with a bladder and a leather over that put them in a cold dry place mind always to keep your pickles tied down close and take them out with a wooden spoon or a spoon kept on purpose to pickle large cucumbers in slices take the large cucumbers before they are too ripe slice them the thickness of crown pieces in a pewter dish to every dozen of cucumbers slice two large onions thin and so on till you have filled the dish with a handful of salt between every row then cover them with another pewter dish and let them stand twenty-four hours then put them into a cullender and let them drain very well put them in a jar cover them over with white wine vinegar and let them stand four hours pour the vinegar from them into a copper saucepan and boil it with a little salt put to the cucumbers a little mace a little whole pepper a large race of ginger sliced and then pour the boiling vinegar on cover them close and when they are cold tie them down they will be fit to eat in two or three days to pickle asparagus take the largest asparagus you can get cut off the white ends and wash the green ends in spring water then put them in another clean water and let them lie two or three hours in it then have a large broad stew pan full of spring water with a good large handful of salt set it on the fire and when it boils put in the grass not tied up but loose and not too many at a time for fear you break the heads just scald them and no more take them out with a broad skimmer and lay them on a cloth to cool 
then for your pickle take a gallon or more according to your quantity of asparagus of white wine vinegar and one ounce of bay salt boil it and put your asparagus in your jar to a gallon of pickle two nutmegs a quarter of an ounce of mace the same of whole white pepper and pour the pickle hot over them cover them with a linen cloth three or four times double let them stand a week and boil the pickle let them stand a week longer boil the pickle again and pour it on hot as before when they are cold cover them close with a bladder and leather to pickle peaches take your peaches when they are at their full growth just before they turn to be ripe be sure they are not bruised then take spring water as much as you think will cover them make it salt enough to bear an egg with bay and common salt an equal quantity of each then put in your peaches and lay a thin board over them to keep them under the water let them stand three days and then take them out and wipe them very carefully with a fine soft cloth and lay them in your glass or jar then take as much white wine vinegar as will fill your glass or jar to every gallon put one pint of the best well-made mustard two or three heads of garlic a good deal of ginger sliced half an ounce of cloves mace and nutmeg mix your pickle well together and pour over your peaches tie them close with a bladder and leather they will be fit to eat in two months you may with a fine penknife cut them across take out the stone fill them with made mustard and garlic and horseradish and ginger tie them together you may pickle nectarines and apricots the same way to pickle radish pods make a strong pickle with cold spring water and bay salt strong enough to bear an egg then put your pods in and lay a thin board on them to keep them under water let them stand ten days then drain them in a sieve and lay them on a cloth to dry then take white wine vinegar as much as you think will cover them boil it and put your pods in a jar with ginger mace cloves and jamaica pepper pour your vinegar boiling hot on cover them with a coarse cloth three or four times double that the steam may come through a little and let them stand two days repeat this two or three times when it is cold put in a pint of mustard seed and some horseradish cover it close to pickle french beans pickle your beans as you do the gherkins to pickle cauliflowers take the largest and closest you can get pull them in sprigs put them in an earthen dish and sprinkle salt over them let them stand twenty-four hours to draw out all the water then put them in a jar and pour salt and water boiling over them cover them close and let them stand till the next day then take them out and lay them on a coarse cloth to drain put them into glass jars and put in a nutmeg sliced two or three blades of mace in each jar cover them with distilled vinegar and tie them down with a bladder and over that a leather they will be fit for use in a month to pickle beetroot set a pot of spring water on the fire when it boils put in your beets and let them boil till they are tender take them out and with a knife take off all the outside cut them in pieces according to your fancy put them in a jar and cover them with cold vinegar and tie them down close when you use the beet take it out of the pickle and cut it into what shapes you like put it in a little dish with some of the pickle over it you may use it for salads or garnish to pickle white plums take the large white plums and if they have stalks let them remain on and do them as you do your peaches to pickle onions take your onions when they are dry enough to lay up for winter 
the smaller they are the better they look put them into a pot and cover them with spring water with a handful of white salt let them boil up then strain them off and take three coats off put them on a cloth and let two people take hold of it one at each end and rub them backward and forward till they are very dry then put them in your bottles with some blades of mace and cloves a nutmeg cut in pieces have some double distilled white wine vinegar boil it up with a little salt let it be cold and put it over the onions cork them close and tie a bladder and leather over it to pickle lemons take twelve lemons scrape them with a piece of broken glass then cut them cross in two four parts downright but not quite through but that they will hang together put in as much salt as they will hold rub them well and strew them over with salt let them lie in an earthen dish three days and turn them every day slit an ounce of ginger very thin and salted for three days twelve cloves of garlic parboiled and salted three days a small handful of mustard seeds bruised and searced through a hair sieve and some red india pepper take your lemons out of the salt squeeze them very gently put them into a jar with the spice and ingredients and cover them with the best white wine vinegar stop them up very close and in a month's time they will be fit to eat to pickle mushrooms white take small buttons cut the stalk and rub off the skin with flannel dipped in salt and throw them into milk and water drain them out and put them into a stew pan with a handful of salt over them cover them close and put them over a gentle stove for five minutes to draw out all the water then put them on a coarse cloth to drain till cold to make pickle for mushrooms take a gallon of the best vinegar put it into a cold still to every gallon of vinegar put half a pound of bay salt a quarter of a pound of mace a quarter of an ounce of cloves a nutmeg cut into quarters keep the top of the still covered with a wet cloth as the cloth dries put on a wet one do not let the fire be too large lest you burn the bottom of the still draw it as long as you taste the acid and no longer when you fill your bottles put in your mushrooms here and there put in a few blades of mace and a slice of nutmeg then fill the bottle with pickle and melt some mutton fat strain it and pour over it it will keep them better than oil you must put your nutmeg over the fire in a little vinegar and give it a boil while it is hot you may slice it as you please when it is cold it will not cut for it will crack to pieces note in the nineteenth chapter at the end of the receipt for making vinegar you will see the best way of pickling mushrooms only they will not be so white to pickle codlings gather your codlings when they are the size of a large double walnut take a pan and put vine leaves thick at the bottom put in your codlings and cover them well with vine leaves and spring water put them over a slow fire till you can peel the skin off take them carefully up in a hair sieve peel them very carefully with a penknife put them into the same water again with the vine leaves as before cover them close and set them at a distance from the fire till they are of a fine green drain them in a cullender till cold put them in jars with some mace and a clove or two of garlic cover them with distilled vinegar pour some mutton fat over and tie them with a bladder and leather down very tight to pickle fennel set spring water on the fire with a handful of salt when it boils tie your fennel in bunches and put them into the water just give them a scold lay them on a cloth to dry when cold put it in a glass with a little mace and nutmeg fill it with cold vinegar lay a bit of green fennel on the top and over that 
a bladder and leather to pickle grapes get grapes at the full growth but not ripe cut them in small bunches fit for garnishing put them in a stone jar with vine leaves between every layer of grapes then take as much spring water as you think will cover them put in a pound of bay salt and as much white salt as will make it bear an egg dry your bay salt and pound it it will melt the sooner put it into a bell metal or copper pot boil it and skim it very well as it boils take all the black scum off but not the white scum when it has boiled a quarter of an hour let it stand to cool and settle when it is almost cold pour the clear liquor on the grapes lay vine leaves on the top tie them down close with a linen cloth and cover them with a dish let them stand twenty-four hours then take them out and lay them on a cloth cover them over with another let them be dried between the cloths then take two quarts of vinegar one quart of spring water and one pound of coarse sugar let it boil a little while skim it as it boils very clean let it stand till it is quite cold put fresh vine leaves at the bottom and between every bunch of grapes and on the top then pour the clear off the pickle on the grapes fill your jar that the pickle may be above the grapes tie a thin bit of board in a piece of flannel lay it on the top of the jar to keep the grapes under the pickle tie them down with a bladder and then a leather take them out with a wooden spoon be sure to make pickle enough to cover them to pickle barberries take white wine vinegar to every quart of vinegar put in half a pound of sixpenny sugar then pick the worst of your barberries and put into this liquor and the best into glasses then boil your pickle with the worst of your barberries and skim it very clean boil it till it looks of a fine colour then let it stand to be cold before you strain then strain it through a cloth wringing it to get all the colour you can from the barberries let it stand to cool and settle then pour it clear into the glasses in a little bit of the pickle boil a little fennel when cold put a little bit at the top of the pot or glass and cover it close with a bladder and leather to every half pound of sugar put a quarter of a pound of white salt red currants is done the same way or you may do barberries thus pick them clean from leaves and spotted ones put them into jars mix spring water and salt pretty strong and put over them and when you see the scum rise change the salt and water and they will keep a long time to pickle red cabbage slice the cabbage very fine crossways put it on an earthen dish and sprinkle a handful of salt over it cover it with another dish and let it stand twenty-four hours then put it in a cullender to drain and lay it in your jar take white wine vinegar enough to cover it a little cloves mace and allspice put them in whole with one pennyworth of cochineal bruised fine boil it up and put it over hot or cold which you like best and cover it close with a cloth till cold then tie it over with leather to pickle golden pippins take the finest pippins you can get free from spots and bruises put them into a preserving pan of cold spring water and set them on a charcoal fire keep them turning with a wooden spoon till they will peel do not let them boil when they are enough peel them and put them into the water again with a quarter of a pint of the best vinegar and a quarter of an ounce of alum cover them very close with a pewter dish and set them on the charcoal fire again a slow fire not to boil let them stand turning them now and then till they look green then take them out and lay them on a cloth to cool when cold make your pickle as for the peaches only instead of made mustard this must be mustard seed whole 
cover them close and keep them for use to pickle nasturtium berries and limes you pick them off the lime trees in the summer take nasturtium berries gathered as soon as the blossom is off or the limes and put them in cold spring water and salt change the water for three days successively make a pickle of white wine vinegar mace nutmeg slice six shallots six blades of garlic some peppercorns salt and horseradish cut in slices make your pickle very strong drain your berries very dry and put them in bottles mix your pickle well up together but you must not boil it put it over the berries or limes and tie them down close to pickle oysters cockles and mussels take two hundred oysters the newest and best you can get be careful to save the liquor in some pan as you open them cut off the black verge saving the rest put them into their own liquor then put all the liquor and oysters into a kettle boil them about half an hour on a very gentle fire do them very slowly skimming them as the scum rises then take them off the fire take out the oysters strain the liquor through a fine cloth then put in the oysters again then take out a pint of the liquor whilst it is hot put thereto three quarters of an ounce of mace and half an ounce of cloves just give it one boil then put it to the oysters and stir up the spices well among them then put in about a spoonful of salt three quarters of a pint of the best white wine vinegar and a quarter of an ounce of whole pepper then let them stand till they are cold then put the oysters as many as you well can into the barrel put in as much liquor as the barrel will hold letting them settle a while and they will soon be fit to eat or you may put them in stone jars cover them close with a bladder and leather and be sure they are quite cold before you cover them up thus do cockles and mussels only this cockles are small and to this spice you must have at least two quarts there is nothing to pick off them mussels you must have two quarts take great care to pick the crab out under the tongue and a little sus which grows at the root of the tongue the two latter cockles and mussels must be washed in several waters to clean them from the grit put them in a stew pan by themselves cover them close and when they are open pick them out of the shells and strain the liquor to pickle young suckers or young artichokes before the leaves are hard take young suckers pare them very nicely all the hard ends of the leaves and stalks just scald them in salt and water and when they are cold put them into little glass bottles with two or three large blades of mace and a nutmeg sliced thin fill them either with distilled vinegar or the sugar vinegar of your own making with half spring water to pickle artichoke bottoms boil artichokes till you can pull the leaves off then take off the chokes and cut them from the stalk take great care you do not let the knife touch the top throw them into salt and water for an hour then take them out and lay them on a cloth to drain then put them into large wide mouthed glasses put a little mace and sliced nutmeg between fill them either with distilled vinegar or sugar vinegar and spring water cover them with mutton fat fried and tie them down with a bladder and leather to pickle samphire take the samphire that is green lay it in a clean pan throw two or three handfuls of salt over then cover it with spring water let it lie twenty-four hours then put it into a clean brass saucepan throw in a handful of salt and cover it with good vinegar cover the pan close and set it over a very slow fire let it stand till it is just green and crisp then take it off in a moment for if it stands to be soft it is spoiled put it in your pickling pot and cover it close when it is cold 
tie it down with a bladder and leather and keep it for use or you may keep it all the year in a very strong brine of salt and water and throw it into vinegar just before you use it to pickle mock ginger take the largest cauliflowers you can get cut off all the flour from the stalks and peel them throw them into strong spring water and salt for three days then drain them in a sieve pretty dry put them in a jar boil white wine vinegar with cloves mace long pepper and allspice each half an ounce forty blades of garlic a stick of horseradish cut in slices a quarter of an ounce of cayenne pepper and a quarter of a pound of yellow turmeric two ounces of bay salt pour it boiling over the stalks cover it down close till next day then boil it again and repeat it twice more and when cold tie it down close to pickle melon mangoes take as many green melons as you want and slit them two-thirds up the middle and with a spoon take all the seeds out put them in strong spring water and salt for twenty-four hours then drain them in a sieve mix half a pound of white mustard two ounces of long pepper the same of allspice half an ounce of cloves and mace a good quantity of garlic and horseradish cut in slices and a quarter of an ounce of cayenne pepper fill the seed holes full of this mixture put a small skewer through the end and tie it round with pack thread close to the skewer put them in a jar and boil up vinegar with some of the mixture in it and pour over the melons cover them down close and let them stand till next day then green them the same way as you do gherkins you may do large cucumbers the same way tie them down close when cold and keep them for use elder shoots in imitation of bamboo take the largest and youngest shoots of elder which put out in the middle of may the middle stalks are most tender and biggest the small ones are not worth doing peel off the outward peel or skin and lay them in a strong brine of salt and water for one night then dry them in a cloth piece by piece in the meantime make your pickle of half white wine and half beer vinegar to each quart of pickle you must put an ounce of white or red pepper an ounce of ginger sliced a little mace and a few corns of jamaica pepper when the spice has boiled in the pickle pour it hot upon the shoots stop them close immediately and set the jar two hours before the fire turning it often it is as good a way of greening pickles as often boiling or you may boil the pickle two or three times and pour it on boiling hot just as you please if you make the pickle of the sugar vinegar you must let one half be spring water you have the receipt for this vinegar in the nineteenth chapter rules to be observed in pickling always use stone jars for all sorts of pickles that require hot pickle to them the first charge is the least for these not only last longer but keep the pickle better for vinegar and salt will penetrate through all earthen vessels stone and glass are the only things to keep pickles in be sure never to put your hands in to take pickles out it will soon spoil it the best method is to every pot tie a wooden spoon full of little holes to take the pickles out with end of section 31section thirty two of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter fifteen of making cakes etc to make a rich cake take four pounds of flour dried and sifted seven pounds of currants washed and rubbed six pounds of the best fresh butter 
two pounds of jordan almonds blanched and beaten with orange flower water and sack till fine then take four pounds of eggs put half the whites away three pounds of double refined sugar beaten and sifted a quarter of an ounce of mace the same of cloves and cinnamon three large nutmegs all beaten fine a little ginger half a pint of sack half a pint of right french brandy sweetmeats to your liking they must be orange lemon and citron work your butter to a cream with your hands before any of your ingredients are in then put in your sugar and mix it well together let your eggs be well beat and strained through a sieve work in your almonds first then put in your eggs beat them together till they look white and thick then put in your sack brandy and spices shake your flour in by degrees and when your oven is ready put in your currants and sweetmeats as you put it in your hoop it will take four hours baking in a quick oven you must keep it beating with your hand all the while you are mixing of it and when your currants are well washed and cleaned let them be kept before the fire so that they may go warm into your cake this quantity will bake best in two hoops to ice a great cake take the whites of twenty-four eggs and a pound of double refined sugar beat and sifted fine mix both together in a deep earthen pan and with a whisk whisk it well for two or three hours till it looks white and thick then with a thin broad board or bunch of feathers spread it all over the top and sides of the cake set it at a proper distance before a good clear fire and keep turning it continually for fear of it changing colour but a cool oven is best and an hour will harden it you may perfume the icing with what perfume you please to make a pound cake take a pound of butter beat it in an earthen pan with your hand one way till it is like a fine thick cream then have ready twelve eggs but half the whites beat them well and beat them up with the butter a pound of flour beat in it a pound of sugar and a few caraways beat it all well together for an hour with your hand or a great wooden spoon butter a pan and put it in and then bake it an hour in a quick oven for change you may put in a pound of currants clean washed and picked to make a cheap seed cake you must take half a peck of flour a pound and a half of butter put it in a saucepan with a pint of new milk set it on the fire take a pound of sugar half an ounce of allspice beat fine and mix them with the flour when the butter is melted pour the milk and butter in the middle of the flour and work it up like a paste pour in with the milk half a pint of good ale yeast set it before the fire to rise just before it goes to the oven either put in some currants or caraway seeds and bake it in a quick oven make it into two cakes they will take an hour and a half baking to make a butter cake you must take a dish of butter and beat it like cream with your hands two pounds of fine sugar well beat three pounds of flour well dried and mix them in with the butter twenty-four eggs leave out half the whites and then beat all together for an hour just as you are going to put it into the oven put in a quarter of an ounce of mace a nutmeg beet a little sack or brandy and seeds or currants just as you please to make gingerbread cakes take three pounds of flour one pound of sugar one pound of butter rubbed in very fine two ounces of ginger beat fine a large nutmeg grated then take a pound of treacle a quarter of a pint of cream make them warm together and make up the bread stiff roll it out and make it up into thin cakes cut them out with a teacup or small glass or roll them round like nuts 
and bake them on tin plates in a slack oven to make a fine seed or saffron cake you must take a quarter of a peck of fine flour a pound and a half of butter three ounces of caraway seeds six eggs beat well a quarter of an ounce of cloves and mace beat together very fine a pennyworth of cinnamon beat a pound of sugar a pennyworth of rose water a pennyworth of saffron a pint and a half of yeast and a quart of milk mix it all together lightly with your hands thus first boil your milk and butter then skim off the butter and mix with your flour and a little of the milk stir the yeast into the rest and strain it mix it with the flour put in your seed and spice rose water tincture of saffron sugar and eggs beat it all up well with your hands lightly and bake it in a hoop or pan but be sure to butter the pan well it will take an hour and a half in a quick oven you may leave out the seed if you choose it and i think it rather better without it but that you may do as you like to make a rich seed cake called the nun's cake you must take four pounds of the finest flour and three pounds of double refined sugar beaten and sifted mix them together and dry them by the fire till you prepare the other materials take four pounds of butter beat it with your hand till it is soft like cream then beat thirty-five eggs leave out sixteen whites strain off your eggs from the treads and beat them and the butter together till all appears like butter put in four or five spoonfuls of rose or orange flour water and beat again then take your flour and sugar with six ounces of caraway seeds and strew them in by degrees beating it up all the time for two hours together you may put in as much tincture of cinnamon or amber grease as you please butter your hoop and let it stand three hours in a moderate oven you must observe always in beating of butter to do it with a cool hand and beat it always one way in a deep earthen dish to make pepper cakes take half a gill of sack half a quarter of an ounce of whole white pepper put it in and boil it together a quarter of an hour then take the pepper out and put in as much double refined sugar as will make it like a paste then drop it in what shape you please on plates and let it dry itself to make portugal cakes mix into a pound of fine flour a pound of loaf sugar beat and sifted then rub it into a pound of pure sweet butter till it is thick like grated white bread then put to it two spoonfuls of rose water two of sack ten eggs whip them very well with a whisk then mix into it eight ounces of currants mixed all well together butter the tin pans fill them but half full and bake them if made without currants they will keep half a year add a pound of almonds blanched and beat with rose water as above and leave out the flour these are another sort and better to make a pretty cake take five pounds of flour well dried one pound of sugar half an ounce of mace as much nutmeg beat your spice very fine mix the sugar and spice in the flour take twenty-two eggs leave out six whites beat them put a pint of ale yeast and the eggs in the flour take two pounds and a half of fresh butter a pint and a half of cream set the cream and butter over the fire till the butter is melted let it stand till it is blood warm before you put it into the flour set it an hour by the fire to rise then put in seven pounds of currants which must be plumped in half a pint of brandy and three quarters of a pound of candied peels it must be an hour and a quarter in the oven you must put two pounds of chopped raisins in the flour and a quarter of a pint of sack when you put the currants in bake it in a hoop 
to make gingerbread take three quarts of fine flour two ounces of beaten ginger a quarter of an ounce of nutmeg cloves and mace beat fine but most of the last mix all together three quarters of a pound of fine sugar two pounds of treacle set it over the fire but do not let it boil three quarters of a pound of butter melted in the treacle and some candied lemon and orange peel cut fine mix all these together well an hour will bake it in a quick oven to make little fine cakes one pound of butter beaten to cream a pound and a quarter of flour a pound of fine sugar beat fine a pound of currants clean washed and picked six eggs two whites left out beat them fine mix the flour sugar and eggs by degrees into the batter beat it all well with both hands either make into little cakes or bake it in one another sort of little cakes a pound of flour and half a pound of sugar beat half a pound of butter with your hand and mix them well together bake it in little cakes to make drop biscuits take eight eggs and one pound of double refined sugar beaten fine twelve ounces of fine flour well dried beat your eggs very well then put in your sugar and beat it and then your flour by degrees beat it all very well together without creasing your oven must be as hot as for halfpenny bread then flour some sheets of tin and drop your biscuits of what bigness you please put them in the oven as fast as you can and when you see them rise watch them if they begin to colour take them out and put in more and if the first is not enough put them in again if they are right done they will have a white ice on them you may if you choose put in a few caraways when they are all baked put them in the oven again to dry then keep them in a very dry place to make common biscuits beat up six eggs with a spoonful of rose water and a spoonful of sack then add a pound of fine powdered sugar and a pound of flour mix them into the eggs by degrees and an ounce of coriander seeds mix all well together shape them on white thin paper or tin moulds in any form you please beat the white of an egg with a feather rub them over and dust fine sugar over them set them in an oven moderately heated till they rise and come to a good colour take them out and when you have done with the oven if you have no stove to dry them in put them in the oven again and let them stand all night to dry to make french biscuits having a pair of clean scales ready in one scale put three new laid eggs in the other scale put as much dried flour an equal weight with the eggs take out the flour and as much fine powdered sugar first beat the whites of the eggs up well with a whisk till they are of a fine froth then whip in half an ounce of candied lemon peel cut very thin and fine and beat well then by degrees whip in the flour and sugar then slip in the yolks and with a spoon temper it well together then shape your biscuits on fine white paper with your spoon and throw powdered sugar over them bake them in a moderate oven not too hot giving them a fine colour on the top when they are baked with a fine knife cut them off from the paper and lay them in boxes for use to make macaroons take a pound of almonds let them be scalded blanched and thrown into cold water then dry them in a cloth and pound them in a mortar moisten them with orange flower water or the white of an egg lest they turn to oil afterwards take an equal quantity of fine powder sugar with three or four whites of eggs and a little musk beat all well together and shape them on a wafer paper with a spoon round bake them in a gentle oven on tin plates to make 
shrewsbury cakes take two pounds of flour a pound of sugar finely sieced mix them together take out a quarter of a pound to roll them in take four eggs beat four spoonfuls of cream and two spoonfuls of rose water beat them well together and mix them with the flour into a paste roll them into thin cakes and bake them in a quick oven to make madling cakes to a quarter of a peck of flour well dried at the fire add two pounds of mutton suet tried and strained clear off when it is a little cool mix it well with the flour some salt and a very little allspice beat fine take half a pint of good yeast and put in half a pint of water stir it well together strain it and mix up your flour into a paste of moderate stiffness you must add as much cold water as will make the paste of a right order make it into cakes about the thickness and bigness of an oat cake have ready some currants clean washed and picked strew some just in the middle of your cakes between your dough so that none can be seen till the cake is broke you may leave the currants out if you do not choose them to make light wigs take a pound and a half of flour and half a pint of milk made warm mix these together cover it up and let it lie by the fire half an hour then take half a pound of sugar and half a pound of butter then work these into a paste and make it into wigs with as little flour as possible let the oven be pretty quick and they will rise very much mind to mix a quarter of a pint of good ale yeast in milk to make very good wigs take a quarter of a peck of the finest flour rub it into three quarters of a pound of fresh butter till it is like grated bread something more than half a pound of sugar half a nutmeg half a race of ginger grated three eggs yolks and whites beat very well and put to them half a pint of thick ale yeast three or four spoonfuls of sack make a hole in the flour and pour in your yeast and eggs as much milk just warm as will make it into a light paste let it stand before the fire to rise half an hour then make it into a dozen and a half of wigs wash them over with egg just as they go into the oven in a quick oven half an hour will bake them to make buns take two pounds of fine flour a pint of good ale yeast put a little sack in the yeast and three eggs beaten knead all these together with a little warm milk a little nutmeg and a little salt and lay it before the fire till it rises very light then knead in a pound of fresh butter a pound of rough caraway comfits and bake them in a quick oven in what shape you please on floured paper to make little plum cakes take two pounds of flour dried in the oven or at a great fire and half a pound of sugar finely powdered four yolks of eggs two whites half a pound of butter washed with rose water six spoonfuls of cream warmed a pound and a half of currants unwashed but picked and rubbed very clean in a cloth mix all well together then make them up into cakes bake them in an oven almost as hot as for a manchet and let them stand half an hour till they are coloured on both sides then take down the oven lid and let them stand to soak you must rub the butter into the flour very well then the egg and cream and then the currants end of section 32section thirty three of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter sixteen of cheesecakes creams jellies whipped syllabubs etc to make fine cheesecakes take a pint of cream warm it and put to it five quarts of milk warm from the cow 
then put runnet into it and give it a stir about and when it is come put the curd in a linen bag or cloth let it drain well away from the way but do not squeeze it much then put it in a mortar and break the curd as fine as butter put to your curd half a pound of sweet almonds blanched and beat exceeding fine and half a pound of macaroons beat very fine if you have no macaroons get naples biscuits then add to it the yolks of nine eggs beaten a whole nutmeg grated two perfumed plums dissolved in rose or orange flower water half a pound of fine sugar mix all well together then melt a pound and a quarter of butter and stir it well in it and half a pound of currants plumped to let stand to cool till you use it then make your puff paste thus take a pound of fine flour wet it with cold water roll it out put into it by degrees a pound of fresh butter and shake a little flour on each coat as you roll it make it just as you use it you may leave out the currants for change nor need you put in the perfume plums if you dislike them and for variety when you make them of macaroons put in as much tincture of saffron as will give them a high colour but no currants this we call saffron cheesecakes the other without currants almond cheesecakes with currants fine cheesecakes with macaroons macaroon cheesecakes to make lemon cheesecakes take the peel of two large lemons boil it very tender then pound it well in a mortar with a quarter of a pound or more of loaf sugar the yolks of six eggs and half a pound of fresh butter and a little curd beat fine pound and mix all together lay a puff paste in your patty pans fill them half full and bake them orange cheesecakes are done the same way only you boil the peel in two or three waters to take out the bitterness a second sort of lemon cheesecakes take two large lemons grate off the peel of both and squeeze out the juice of one and add to it half a pound of double refined sugar twelve yolks of eggs eight whites well beaten then melt half a pound of butter in four or five spoonfuls of cream then stir it all together and set it over the fire stirring it till it begins to be pretty thick then take it off and when it is cold fill your patty pans little more than half full put a paste very thin at the bottom of your patty pans half an hour with a quick oven will bake them to make almond cheesecakes take half a pound of jordan almonds and lay them in cold water all night the next morning blanch them into cold water then take them out and dry them in a clean cloth beat them very fine in a little orange flower water then take six eggs leave out four whites beat them and strain them then half a pound of white sugar with a little beaten mace beat them well together in a marble mortar take ten ounces of good fresh butter melt it a little grated lemon peel and put them in the mortar with the other ingredients mix all well together and fill your patty pans to make fairy butter take the yolks of two hard eggs and beat them in a marble mortar with a large spoonful of orange flower water and two teaspoonfuls of fine sugar beat to powder beat this all together till it is a fine paste then mix it up with about as much fresh butter out of the churn and force it through a fine strainer full of little holes into a plate this is a pretty thing to set off a table at supper to make almond custards take a pint of cream blanch and beat a quarter of a pound of almonds fine with two spoonfuls of rose water sweeten it to your palate beat up the yolks of four eggs stir all together one way over the fire till it is thick then pour it out into cups 
or you may bake it in little china cups to make baked custards one pint of cream boiled with mace and cinnamon when cold take four eggs two whites left out a little rose and orange flower water and sack nutmeg and sugar to your palate mix them well together and bake them in china cups to make plain custards take a quart of new milk sweeten it to your taste grate in a little nutmeg beat up eight eggs leave out half the whites beat them up well stir them into the milk and bake it in china basins or put them in a deep china dish have a kettle of water boiling set the cup in let the water come above half way but do not let it boil too fast for fear of its getting into the cups and take a hot iron and colour them at the top you may add a little rose water to make orange butter take the yolks of ten eggs beat very well half a pint of rhenish six ounces of sugar and the juice of three sweet oranges set them over a gentle fire stirring them one way till it is thick when you take it off stir in a piece of butter as big as a large walnut to make steeple cream take five ounces of hartshorn and two ounces of ivory and put them in a stone bottle fill it up with fair water to the neck put in a small quantity of gum arabic and gum dragon then tie up the bottle very close and set it into a pot of water with hay at the bottom let it stand six hours then take it out and let it stand an hour before you open it lest it fly in your face then strain it and it will be a strong jelly then take a pound of blanched almonds beat them very fine mix it with a pint of thick cream and let it stand a little then strain it out and mix it with a pound of jelly set it over the fire till it is scalding hot sweeten it to your taste with double refined sugar then take it off put in a little amber and pour it into small high gallipots like a sugar loaf at top when it is cold turn them and lay cold whipped cream about them in heaps be sure it does not boil when the cream is in lemon cream take five large lemons pare them as thin as possible steep them all night in twenty spoonfuls of spring water with the juice of the lemons then strain it through a jelly bag into a silver saucepan if you have one the whites of six eggs beat well ten ounces of double refined sugar set it over a very slow charcoal fire stir all the time one way skim it and when it is as hot as you can bear your fingers in pour it into glasses a second lemon cream take the juice of four large lemons half a pint of water a pound of double refined sugar beaten fine the whites of seven eggs and the yolk of one beaten very well mix all together strain it and set it on a gentle fire stirring it all the while and skim it clean put into it the peel of one lemon when it is very hot but do not boil take out the lemon peel and pour it into china dishes you must observe to keep it stirring one way all the time it is over the fire jelly of cream take four ounces of hartshorn put it on in three pints of water let it boil till it is a stiff jelly which you will know by taking a little in a spoon to cool then strain it off and add to it half a pint of cream two spoonfuls of rose water two spoonfuls of sack and sweeten it to your taste then give it a gentle boil but keep stirring it all the time or it will curdle then take it off and stir it till it is cold then put it into broad bottom cups let them stand all night and turn them out into a dish take half a pint of cream two spoonfuls of rose water and as much sack sweeten it to your palate and pour over them 
to make orange cream take and pare the rind of a seville orange very fine and squeeze the juice of four oranges put them into a stew pan with half a pint of water and half a pound of fine sugar beat the whites of five eggs and mix into it and set them on a slow fire stir it one way till it grows thick and white strain it through a gauze and stir it till cold then beat the yolks of five eggs very fine and put into your pan with the cream stir it over a gentle fire till it is ready to boil then put it in a basin and stir it till it is cold and then put it in your glasses to make gooseberry cream take two quarts of gooseberries put to them as much water as will cover them scald them and then run them through a sieve with a spoon to a quart of the pulp you must have six eggs well beaten and when the pulp is hot put in an ounce of fresh butter sweeten it to your taste put in your eggs and stir them over a gentle fire till they grow thick then set it by and when it is almost cold put into it two spoonfuls of juice of spinach and a spoonful of orange flower water or sack stir it well together and put it into your basin when it is cold serve it to the table to make barley cream take a small quantity of pearl barley boil it in milk and water till it is tender then strain the liquor from it put your barley into a quart of cream and let it boil a little then take the whites of five eggs and the yolk of one beaten with a spoonful of fine flour and two spoonfuls of orange flour water then take the cream off the fire and mix the eggs by degrees and set it over the fire again to thicken sweeten to your taste pour it into basins and when it is cold serve it up to make pistachio cream take half a pound of pistachio nuts break them and take out the kernels beat them in a mortar with a spoonful of brandy put them in a stew pan with a pint of good cream and the yolks of two eggs beat very fine stir it gently over a slow fire till it is thick but be sure it do not boil then put it into a soup plate when it is cold stick some kernels cut long ways all over it and send it to table hartshorn cream take four ounces of hartshorn shavings and boil it in three pints of water till it is reduced to half a pint and run it through a jelly bag put to it a pint of cream and four ounces of fine sugar and just boil it up put it into cups or glasses and let it stand till quite cold dip your cups or glasses in scalding water and turn them out into your dish stick sliced almonds on them it is generally eat with white wine and sugar to make almond cream take a quart of cream boil it with a nutmeg grated a blade or two of mace a bit of lemon peel and sweeten to your taste then blanch a quarter of a pound of almonds beat them very fine with a spoonful of rose or orange flower water take the whites of nine eggs well beat and strain them to your almonds beat them together rub them very well through a coarse hair sieve mix all together with your cream set it on the fire stir it all one way all the time till it almost boils pour it into a bowl and stir it till cold and then put it in cups or glasses and send it to table to make a fine cream take a quart of cream sweeten it to your palate grate a little nutmeg put in a spoonful of orange flower water and rose water and two spoonfuls of sack beat up four eggs but two whites stir it all together one way over the fire till it is thick have cups ready and pour it in to make ratafia cream take six large laurel leaves boil them in a quart of thick cream when it is boiled throw away the leaves 
beat the yolks of five eggs with a little cold cream and sugar to your taste then thicken the cream with your eggs set it over the fire again but do not let it boil keep it stirring all the while one way and pour it into china dishes when it is cold it is fit for use to make whipped cream take a quart of thick cream and the whites of eight eggs beat well with half a pint of sack mix it together and sweeten it to your taste with double refined sugar you may perfume it if you please with a little musk or amber grease tied in a rag and steeped a little in the cream whip it up with a whisk and some lemon peel tied in the middle of the whisk take the froth with the spoon and lay it in your glasses or basins this does well over a fine tart to make whipped syllabubs take a quart of thick cream and half a pint of sack the juice of two seville oranges or lemons grate in the peel of two lemons half a pound of double refined sugar pour it into a broad earthen pan and whisk it well but first sweeten some red wine or sack and fill your glasses as full as you choose then as the froth rises take it off with a spoon and lay it on a sieve to drain then lay it carefully into your glasses till they are as full as they will hold do not make these long before you use them many use cider sweetened or any wine you please or lemon or orange whey made thus squeeze the juice of a lemon or orange into a quarter of a pint of milk when the curd is hard pour the whey clear off and sweeten it to your palate you may colour some with the juice of spinach some with saffron and some with cochineal just as you fancy to make everlasting syllabubs take five half pints of thick cream half a pint of rhenish half a pint of sack and the juice of two large seville oranges grate in just the yellow rind of three lemons and a pound of double refined sugar well beat and sifted mix all together with a spoonful of orange flower water beat it well together with a whisk half an hour then with a spoon take it off and lay it on a sieve to drain then fill your glasses these will keep above a week and is better made the day before the best way to whip syllabub is have a fine large chocolate mill which you must keep on purpose and a large deep bowl to mill them in it is both quicker done and the froth stronger for the thin that is left at the bottom have ready some calf's foot jelly boiled and clarified there must be nothing but the calf's foot boiled to a hard jelly when cold take off the fat clear it with the whites of eggs run it through a flannel bag and mix it with the clear which you saved of the syllabubs sweeten it to your palate and give it a boil then pour it into basins or what you please when cold turn it out and it is a fine flummery to make a solid syllabub to a quart of rich cream put a pint of white wine the juice of two lemons the rind of one grated sweeten it to your taste mill it with a chocolate mill till it is all of a thickness then put it in glasses or a bowl and set it in a cool place till next day to make a trifle cover the bottom of your dish or bowl with naples biscuits broke in pieces macaroons broke in halves and ratafia cakes just wet them all through with sack then make a good boiled custard not too thick and when cold pour it over it then put a syllabub over that you may garnish it with ratafia cakes currant jelly and flowers and strew different coloured nonpareils over it note these are bought at the confectioners to make hartshorn jelly boil half a pound of hartshorn in three quarts of water over a gentle fire till it becomes a jelly 
if you take out a little to cool and it hangs on the spoon it is enough strain it while it is hot put it in a well tinned saucepan put to it a pint of rhenish wine and a quarter of a pound of loaf sugar beat the whites of four eggs or more to a froth stir it all together that the whites mix well with the jelly and pour it in as if you were cooling it let it boil two or three minutes then put in the juice of three or four lemons let it boil a minute or two longer when it is finely curdled and a pure white colour have ready a swan skin jelly bag over a china basin pour in your jelly and pour back again till it is as clear as rock water then set a very clean china basin under have your glasses as clean as possible and with a clean spoon fill your glasses have ready some thin rind of the lemons and when you have filled half your glasses throw your peel into the basin and when the jelly is all run out of the bag with a clean spoon fill the rest of the glasses and they will look of a fine amber colour now in putting in the ingredients there is no certain rule you must put in lemon and sugar to your palate most people love them sweet and indeed they are good for nothing unless they are orange jelly take half a pound of hartshorn shavings or four ounces of isinglass and boil it in spring water till it is of a strong jelly take the juice of three seville oranges three lemons and six china oranges and the rind of one seville orange and one lemon pared very thin put them to your jelly sweeten it with loaf sugar to your palate beat up the whites of eight eggs to a froth and mix well in then boil it for ten minutes then run it through a jelly bag till it is very clear and put it in moulds till cold then dip your mould in warm water and turn it out into a china dish or a flat glass and garnish with flowers to make ribbon jelly take out the great bones of four calves feet put the feet into a pot with ten quarts of water three ounces of hartshorn three ounces of isinglass a nutmeg quartered and four blades of mace then boil this till it comes to two quarts strain it through a flannel bag let it stand twenty-four hours then scrape off all the fat from the top very clean then slice it put to it the whites of six eggs beaten to a froth boil it a little and strain it through a flannel bag then run the jelly into little high glasses run every colour as thick as your finger one colour must be thorough cold before you put another on and that you put on must be but blood warm for fear it mix together you must colour red with cochineal green with spinach yellow with saffron blue with syrup of violets white with thick cream and sometimes the jelly by itself you may add orange flower water or wine and sugar and lemon if you please but this is all fancy to make calves feet jelly boil two calves feet in a gallon of water till it comes to a quart then strain it let it stand till cold skim off all the fat clean and take the jelly up clean if there is any settling in the bottom leave it put the jelly into a saucepan with a pint of mountain wine half a pound of loaf sugar the juice of four large lemons beat up six or eight whites of eggs with a whisk then put them into a saucepan and stir all together well till it boils let it boil a few minutes have ready a large flannel bag pour it in it will run through quick pour it in again till it runs clear then have ready a large china basin with the lemon peels cut as thin as possible let the jelly run into that basin and the peels both give it a fine amber colour and also a flavour with a clean silver spoon fill your glasses to make currant jelly strip the currants from the stalks put them in a stone jar 
stop it close set it in a kettle of boiling water halfway the jar let it boil half an hour take it out and strain the juice through a coarse hair sieve to a pint of juice put a pound of sugar set it over a fine quick fire in your preserving pan or bell metal skillet keep stirring it all the time till the sugar is melted then skim the scum off as fast as it rises when your jelly is very clear and fine pour it into galley pots when cold cut white paper just the bigness of the top of the pot and lay on the jelly dip those papers in brandy then cover the top close with white paper and prick it full of holes set it in a dry place put some into glasses and paper them to make raspberry gam take a pint of this currant jelly and a quart of raspberries bruise them well together set them over a slow fire keeping them stirring all the time till it boils let it boil gently half an hour and stir it round very often to keep it from sticking and rub it through a colander pour it into your gallipots paper as you do the currant jelly and keep it for use they will keep for two or three years and have the full flavour of the raspberry to make hartshorn flummery boil half a pound of the shavings of hartshorn in three pints of water till it comes to a pint then strain it through a sieve into a basin and set it by to cool then set it over the fire let it just melt and put to it half a pint of thick cream scalded and grown cold again a quarter of a pint of white wine and two spoonfuls of orange flower water sweeten it with sugar and beat it for an hour and a half or it will not mix well nor look well dip your cups in water before you put in the flummery or else it will not turn out well it is best when it stands a day or two before you turn it out when you serve it up turn it out of the cups and stick blanched almonds cut in long narrow bits on the top you may eat them either with wine or cream a second way to make hartshorn flummery take three ounces of hartshorn and put to it two quarts of spring water let it simmer over the fire six or seven hours till half the water is consumed or else put it in a jug and set it in the oven with household bread then strain it through a sieve and beat half a pound of almonds very fine with some orange flower water in the beating when they are beat mix a little of your jelly with it and some fine sugar strain it out and mix it with your other jelly stir it together till it is little more than blood warm then pour it into half pint basins or dishes for the purpose and fill them up half full when you use them turn them out of the dish as you do flummery if it does not come out clean set your basin a minute or two in warm water you may stick almonds in or not just as you please eat it with wine and sugar or make your jelly this way put six ounces of hartshorn in a glazed jug with a long neck and put to it three pints of soft water cover the top of the jug close and put a weight on it to keep it steady set it in a pot or kettle of water twenty-four hours let it not boil but be scalding hot then strain it out and make your jelly to make oatmeal flummery get some oatmeal put it into a broad deep pan then cover it with water stir it together and let it stand twelve hours then pour off that water clear and put on a good deal of fresh water shift it again in twelve hours and so on in twelve more then pour off the water clear and strain the oatmeal through a coarse hair sieve and pour it into a saucepan keeping it stirring all the time with a stick till it boils and is very thick then pour it into dishes when cold turn it into plates and eat it with what you please either wine and sugar 
or beer and sugar or milk it eats very pretty with cider and sugar you must observe to put a great deal of water to the oatmeal and when you pour off the last water pour on just enough fresh as to stain the oatmeal well some let it stand forty-eight hours some three days shifting the water every twelve hours but that is as you love it for sweetness or tartness gruts once cut does better than oatmeal mind to stir it together when you put in fresh water to make a fine syllabub from the cow make your syllabub of either cider or wine sweeten it pretty sweet and grate nutmeg in then milk the milk into the liquor when this is done pour over the top half a pint or a pint of cream according to the quantity of syllabub you make you may make this syllabub at home only have new milk make it as hot as milk from the cow and out of a teapot or any such thing pour it in holding your hand very high and strew over some currants well washed and picked and plumped before the fire to make a hedgehog take two pounds of blanched almonds beat them well in a mortar with a little canary and orange flower water to keep them from oiling make them into stiff paste then beat in the yolks of twelve eggs leave out five of the whites put to it a pint of cream sweetened with sugar put in half a pound of sweet butter melted set it on a furnace or slow fire and keep it constantly stirring till it is stiff enough to be made in the form of a hedgehog then stick it full of blanched almonds slit and stuck up like the bristles of a hedgehog then put it into a dish take a pint of cream and the yolks of four eggs beat up sweeten with sugar to your palate stir them together over a slow fire till it is quite hot then pour it round the hedgehog in a dish and let it stand till it is cold and serve it up or a rich calf's foot jelly made clear and good poured into the dish round the hedgehog when it is cold it looks pretty and makes a neat dish or it looks pretty in the middle of a table for supper to make french flummery take a quart of cream and half an ounce of icing glass beat it fine and stir it into the cream let it boil softly over a slow fire a quarter of an hour keep it stirring all the time then take it off sweeten it to your palate and put in a spoonful of rose water and a spoonful of orange flower water strain it and pour it into a glass or basin or what you please and when it is cold turn it out it makes a fine side dish you may eat it with cream wine or what you please lay round it baked pears it both looks very pretty and eats fine a buttered tort take eight or ten large codlings and scald them when cold skin them take the pulp and beat it as fine as you can with a silver spoon then mix in the yolks of six eggs and the whites of four beat all well together squeeze in the juice of a seville orange and shred the rind as fine as possible with some grated nutmeg and sugar to your taste melt some fine fresh butter and beat up with it according as it wants till it is all like a fine thick cream and then make a fine puff paste have a large tin patty that will just hold it cover the patty with the paste and pour in the ingredients do not put any cover on bake it a quarter of an hour then slip it out of the patty on a dish and throw fine sugar well beat all over it it is a very pretty side dish for a second course you may make this of any large apples you please moonshine first have a piece of tin made in the shape of a half moon as deep as a half pint basin and one in the shape of a large star and two or three lesser ones 
boil two calves feet in a gallon of water till it comes to a quart then strain it off and when cold skim off the fat take half the jelly and sweeten it with sugar to your palate beat up the whites of four eggs stir all together over a slow fire till it boils then run it through a flannel bag till clear put it in a clean saucepan and take an ounce of sweet almonds blanched and beat very fine in a marble mortar with two spoonfuls of rose water and two of orange flower water then strain it through a coarse cloth mix it with the jelly stir in four large spoonfuls of thick cream stir it all together till it boils then have ready the dish you intend it for lay the tin in the shape of a half moon in the middle and the stars round it lay little weights on the tin to keep them in the places you would have them lie then pour in the above blanche manger into the dish and when it is quite cold take out the tin things and mix the other half of the jelly with half a pint of good white wine and the juice of two or three lemons with loaf sugar enough to make it sweet and the whites of eight eggs beat fine stir it all together over a slow fire till it boils then run it through a flannel bag till it is quite clear into a china basin and very carefully fill up the places where you took the tin out let it stand till cold and send it to table note you may for change fill the dish with a fine thick almond custard and when it is cold fill up the half moon and stars with a clear jelly the floating island a pretty dish for the middle of a table at a second course or for supper you may take a soup dish according to the size and quantity you would make but a pretty deep glass is best and set it on a china dish first take a quart of the thickest cream you can get make it pretty sweet with fine sugar pour in a gill of sack grate the yellow rind of a lemon in and mill the cream till it is all of a thick froth then carefully pour the thin from the froth into a dish take a french roll or as many as you want cut it as thin as you can lay a layer of that as light as possible on the cream then a layer of currant jelly then a very thin layer of roll and then hartshorn jelly then french roll and over that whip your froth which you saved off the cream very well milled up and lay at the top as high as you can heap it and as for the rim of the dish set it round with fruit or sweetmeats according to your fancy this looks very pretty in the middle of a table with candles round it and you may make it of as many different colours as you fancy and according to what jellies and gams or sweetmeats you have or at the bottom of your dish you may put the thickest cream you can get but that is as you fancy End of section 33